I've done many videos on Google stock and I did say it's the cheapest of the magnificent sevens as it's down over 19% over the last few months from all time high. But a lot of you asked me about Microsoft. What about Microsoft? Because Microsoft also hasn't been up that much over the last six months, up like two and a half percent. But the stock at least doesn't have the same antitrust problems that Google is facing. They could break up Google, they could charge them fines, they could do many different things to the company, but Microsoft doesn't have this problem. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to analyze Microsoft, a lot of stuff around AI, open AI, and give you my fair value and let you know if I believe Microsoft over here is presenting a good buying opportunity, or if it's maybe still overvalued, then we should be waiting for lower price. I'm gonna let you know all that stuff in the video. Now I found this very interesting account on X and it pretty much gives you how they make money, how Microsoft makes money, and it gives you all the details. For example, most of their revenues, they come from the server, Azure, then they have Office, Windows, Gaming, which is Xbox, LinkedIn, which was surprising to me that they make $4.3 billion from LinkedIn. I personally didn't know that. Then they have Bing Search, which has uh, been uh, gaining some popularity as of recent. Then they have other kind of revenues. Over 70% gross margin, just an amazing business model. Operating profit is 43%, because a lot of it goes to research and development, so they could stay competitive and innovate and do some acquisitions and main different things. So it's just an amazing company, wide moat, massive moat actually, just amazing. For Microsoft Azure, it's been gaining market share in, uh, in terms of cloud providers, but Amazon Web Services is still number one. Microsoft Azure is number two, then you have Google Cloud, and then Alibaba Cloud, and a few others. But if you look over here, Microsoft Azure was 15% in Q4 of 2018. Now it's pretty close to 24%. For Amazon Web Services, it had actually declined in market share from 2018 to now Q2, of 2024 and you look at the growth rate the growth rate has been absolutely stunning for microsoft azure which is in the blue over the last four quarters they grew 29 percent 30 percent 31 percent and 29 percent as of the last quarter if you compare that to amazon web services it was only 12 percent 13 percent 17 percent and has recently re-accelerated to 19 percent for amazon web services so as you could see azure is number two but it's rapidly, rapidly growing and it's catching up to AWS. Now, I'm a big Amazon fan and I did say that I like the company and I said the stock was a buy in the 70s and even in the 180s. I don't think it's too expensive at all. I'm going to talk about Microsoft over here. The last earnings report was very good for the company. They did beat on EPS and they also beat on revenue. A lot of you asked me about open AI and mainly about the AI stocks. You told me, you know, can you do a video on the best AI stocks to buy? And I'm just being honest with you guys. I think such videos is mainly, you know, to, to get attention and then give you the big seven. Because the big seven, are, I believe they're going to be the best AI stocks for the future. Maybe Palantir is not of the big seven that could have something to do with AI. But I'm honestly not just an AI expert. And I try to stick to stuff that I understand. That's why I don't analyze NVIDIA and give you AI 100x hype and all these things. Most companies aren't actually making money with AI. I mean, that, that's the truth. Very few companies are making profits all about the futures. And I much rather play this future with a lot of the energy stocks. I talked about nuclear energy, powering data centers. I talked about natural gas. I talked about a lot of things, which in my opinion is a much better way to play AI than to bet on one specific company dominating in a specific way over the other competitor, that's much harder to do. I'd rather play it with energy, infrastructure stocks, and a lot of the stuff I talked about before. But for OpenAI, I have this interesting chart to share, and I'm not sure if it's accurate because a lot of people in the comments, likely Microsoft shareholders, they said it's not accurate, but this is from Global, uh, Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research, and it shows you the number of monthly visits to ChatGPT website and over the last two quarters, this monthly visits has <laughs> absolutely plummeted. So a lot of people are saying maybe the hype is over. People wanted to find out what ChatGPT was, they used it, they did all these things, it was fun for a while, and they went back to Google search or they went back to whatever they used to do before. And that's very possible, but I hear a lot of people telling me uh, that uh, they're using ChatGPT and not, not even using Google search anymore. So that stuff, I don't believe it's going away anytime soon. And I'm not sure if this chart is accurate. You could let me know in the comments if you know anything. 
But to me, it's a pretty interesting one because we always have these hype cycles and then you don't really know if this is sustainable or not or if maybe people are liking other kind of uh, AI search stuff than chat GPT and people are using other stuff and competition is increasing in this area and that's something that you have to know. But for the valuation on Microsoft, it's now trading at 32 times earnings. Now, anytime you hear 32 times earnings, you're like, oh my God, 32 times earnings, that's overvalued. A lot of people believe that if something is above 10 times earnings, it's like, you know, it's, it's like extremely overvalued. But it's not much about the multiple, it's what you're actually getting for the multiple. So if you're paying 32 times earnings, what are you getting for 32 times earnings? You're getting a company that has around 36% net income margins. That's very high net income margins. You're getting a company with very high return on capital. This is a Charlie Munger's favorite metric, return on invested capital, 34, 33%, 29% out of the last uh, quarter. And 29%, it's still very high. You're getting a company that's a $3 trillion market cap, but it's still growing earnings per share mid double digits, I don't know, 15, 16, 17%. This is amazing. I mean, I'm sure many times, even myself and other people, we look at Apple, we look at Microsoft, we look at Google, we're like, these companies are too big. They can't keep on growing forever. Yet they just keep finding ways to keep growing. And it was absolutely uh, stunning. And you're getting all that stuff, but you're getting Microsoft with a very wide moat, with a growing Azure business, growing profitability in this area, with a lot of stuff in gaming, a lot of the new generations, they love gaming stuff and Xbox. Now they have Activision Blizzard. That's amazing stuff. You have the AI potential that Microsoft will likely be a leader in. So you're getting all that stuff for 32 times earnings. In my opinion, it's not really that expensive. The mean was 30 times, and now trading at 32 times, it's not the most expensive stock in the stock market, that's for sure. But the problem is we have anchoring bias. So we look at the stock, we're like, oh, it was trading at 21 times earnings in November of 2022. So 32 times earnings overvalued. I'm going to wait for 21 times and it never comes in. That's something I experienced before. And it's something we have to know. But I'm going to look at my own valuation model and let you know if I believe Microsoft is a good buying opportunity here or not. For revenue growth, I use 15%. I think 15% is very fair for the company. They've been growing 11, 12, 13%. Based on the analyst estimates, a few other things, I think 15% is fair for the company over the next five years. I think it's very achievable. Net income margin, 36%. I kept it at 36%. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it increases in the future as a lot of the AI investments and Microsoft's Azure's profitability expands, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being a little bit higher. But 36%, I kept it the same. PE ratio, this is where I'm going to be changing a little bit, but I use 32 times earnings and a very small dividend using all those metrics, which in my opinion is probably the best case scenario. I wouldn't be betting on more than 15% a year in growth. I wouldn't be betting on more than 32 times earnings for Microsoft. So if all that stuff goes on perfectly, if everything goes well, nothing goes wrong, you're getting 85% on the upside or 13.4% CAG or over the next five years, which is really not bad at all with a mega cap stock like uh, Microsoft. But for me personally, I try to look for doubles every five years, meaning if I want to get a double on Microsoft, and if everything goes perfect, if that's what I'm betting on, Microsoft here is still not a buy. And I would have to pay around 391 for me to be buying Microsoft. And it was trading at 391 not long ago. I think it was like, uh, you know, it was like three, four months ago it was trading at 391. So that's a price for me I want to look at if, I, if everything goes perfect. But not always everything goes perfect. And you want to have some kind of a margin of safety. So for me personally, I would look at 28 times earnings, a slight multiple contraction. And that would leave me some safety in case maybe the revenue growth was a little bit slower. If something else happened, if net income margins decline, I think 20 times earnings is a better bet. And if I'm betting on 28 times, I'm only getting 62% on the upside or around a 10.4% CAG or which is really pretty much close to the S&P 500. It's nothing special, nothing major. And in this case, for me to get a double, I would have to buy Microsoft as 343. And 343 is also, I mean, the stock is up a lot. 343 is like where it was trading at, uh, it's like, you know, 10 or 11 months ago. So it wasn't too far from here. But for me, I mean, it's, it's a little bit difficult. So I, maybe I made you confused. But the best case scenario, Microsoft is still not a buy. And I would have to buy it at 391. 
maybe it's a mid case to worst case scenario, I would have to buy it at 343. So if I had to buy Microsoft, I wouldn't be paying more than 350. If it gets to 350, 355, 360, around this level, and it was trading there like, you know, 10, 11 months ago, I think Microsoft around 350, 360, maybe 370 maximum would be a good buying opportunity with some kind of margin of safety. But if you're a very long-term investor at this price, and I'm just being honest, Microsoft is not, is not too overvalued. It's not expensive. It's a decent buying opportunity, but it's not going to give you the best returns in the market. If you want the best returns, I would say go on Google. Google here, I think, is going to end up returning much more than Microsoft at this price, even though Microsoft could arguably be a much better company. But from here, I'm only seeing 13%. I'm seeing a lot of downside, more downside than upside. If I had to buy it, I would look at 350, 370 per share. I think that's a good buying opportunity on Microsoft. If you don't want to overpay, that's what I like to do. I don't like to overpay for stocks. No matter how good the quality is, I still don't want to overpay. And that's how I do it. And this is my honest opinion on Microsoft. Not financial advice, just my opinion again. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I'll talk to you in another video.